This is Wildcat Dojo Conversations. Hi, and welcome back. Today I'm still with Sensei Jackie and Landon. Hey. Hello. And Sensei Jay stayed with us. Hello. Welcome to Wildcat Dojo Conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was me. You guys knew it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and today I'm sitting with Sensei Zach, and this is my first time trying an interview, so wish me luck. Good luck. Zach is the son of Greg. He was on our show not long ago. Yes. I rhymed that. The reason that I'm using him as an interview guest today is because three and a half to four years ago, after graduating as a black belt in karate and graduating high school, he moved away to college. And I'm interested in what karate things stay with a person when they move and what karate things slip away and how relevant it is to take into your college life. I'm really interested in that subject. But before we get there, I want to introduce you. So obviously he was a karate black belt. He's been playing tennis since he was four years old, was ranked here in Florida, and was recruited by his college. I'm going to go for this. Are you ready? Yep. Rensselaer. That's right. Bam. <laughs> Rensselaer <laughs> College. In the fall of 2016, he left for school. So say hi to the crowd. Hi, everybody. We're so glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay. So as far as I know, you started training with Sensei Lisa. And so a shout out to Sensei Lisa Drake. Hello. Hey, Sensei. <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> about, about age six or seven? Something like that. Yeah. A really long time ago. Now you're somewhere in the 22 range? 21. Do you have any really early dojo memories? Like you, I remember where you guys were over on Peters Road here in Broward County. Hmm. That's a good question. Such a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he thinks that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, now that he's only New York City. I know, I know. <laughs> I feel like one memory that I have is when we were doing karate in the dojo, and then we would go out and play on the playground for a bit and do like some karate things out there, and then come back and do more work, so to speak. So you would have some. She would allow some playtime within the training. Us. Yeah, we all feel that. If you Us. if you were trained to be a teacher by me, you let kids shake it out. I know there are teachers still who are training in our style who still keep that military thing going with the kids, but it's really tough on children to be that focused for that long. I can't imagine why they want to come back. When I ask kids what's the best part of the day, they inevitably say one of the silly games that didn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Maybe one out of 50 kids will say, oh, I like doing Tenshaw best, Sensei. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And they say, oh, playground day was fun. Yes, that's what they say. I think even for everybody, not just children, it's hard to like keep your attention span on something. How does that work in college? Nobody cares. Um, Do some of the teachers address that as a real thing? Like you need to let your brain relax in order for it to stay strong? At least at my school, not at all. The professors don't really say anything about it. It's all like on your own to figure out, which is something that's a lot different than in high school. Like in college... You could be sleeping right in front of the professor and they'll just go about their, their lecture. It's sort of like they give it, they present you the information and it's up to you whether you want to take it in. And that is the same as in karate. I often have said it's like we set out a buffet and people take what they take that day. And we have to make the dishes look fresh, even though we've served them many, many times, <laughs> right? That's right. All righty. So looking back, are there any parts of training that you miss? There's a lot of different parts of training that I miss. A lot of times at school, if I'm sort of not having a great day, I don't get that sort of release where I can... I get a little bit of it with tennis, but it's just different. It's nice to also like be learning about like fighting techniques and ways of defending yourself and just also having fun that you get out of karate. So I miss all that a lot. Not judgmentally, but I'm just asking because this happened to me the other day. I was talking to a student. Do you ever just spontaneously get up and do some sort of karate moves, not necessarily even in any specific order? You just do them because you want that feeling of release that karate gives you? Does it ever even come in your head to do it? You can answer honestly. It comes into my head sometimes, but I usually don't, don't do it. But the reason I ask is because somebody called me the other day and they were in a really down mood and they were saying, give me some hints to break myself out of this. And one of them I said was go out in the yard and do kata. Because it will pull your mind out of where you are and drop you into another place. Another thing is just the the yelling in karate, just the ki eyes. Right. <laughs> like it's 
I feel like it's it's great for you. So sometimes when I'm playing tennis, I'll just think about doing a kiai and karate when I'm hitting the ball. It's cathartic yelling. I was having a conversation with kids the other day, and I think of the seven of us that were sitting together, only three of us really liked the yelling. The other people ha- are trying to teach themselves how to be a yeller. I don't think, if my memory is correct, that when you were very young, that you were a yeller by nature. You're totally correct. It took me a long time to develop that. And now you love it? The, the, yes. the noise? <laughs> it, 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 don't you think? What do you guys think there? Like, when I was young, I didn't realize how great of an opportunity karate is to have a place where it's accepted for you to yell like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, like, it feels good. If you're having, like, a bad day, just to, like, let it go. That's what the heavy bag's for. Yeah. Yes. The heavy between the bag and you can ask my mom, sometimes screaming feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I agree with all those things. Okay, so Lau, you got to be honest on this one. What don't you miss? Would you say the push-ups? <laughs> or do you still do push-ups? I still do push-ups. Do you have a tough physical training regimen for tennis? Yes, I do. We have uh, lifts twice a week plus a day of conditioning and then also all the practices. So what don't you miss? About testing. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah, so. That's, that's what it was. Showdown testing. His eyes lit up as soon as I said that. Yep. That's funny. Yeah, testing is wicked. When you're testing for a black belt level, the, the teacher, the sensei, rarely tells you what's good about yourself. So you have to have enough self-image to be able to get through that while the whole time you're hearing, no, do it this way, no, no, no. It's, it's a really tough time. Does I that just, relate to testing at college? It does, somewhat. I have like a mental image of black belt testing where I go into the center of this big room and have these, these senseis just staring you down from, <laughs> from all around. Yeah, it, it, it's intimidating. Definitely is. I think you can get a similar feeling... When you're in college, it's not as intense, but when everybody's sort of in that testing room, just going out to test, for example, when you, when you're not sure about an answer, it can be very worrying. So when you're in that moment, does the focus that you learned in karate come into play so you can actually not be distracted by the fact that the answer is not coming to you, but let me think about what I do know and see what I can put together? Can you, does your focus come into play? Can you bring that back to karate training? Definitely. I think that's huge. Like one of the biggest things in in karate, I think the breathing that we do during every class is sort of where a lot of that stems from, because that's sort of where I feel I get reminded of karate the most, where I'm in just day to day life. And I, I feel like people who are not trained in karate tend to get ramped up by whatever is going on. But I feel like I have a special talent that I've gained through karate where I can sort of take a step back take a deep breath and that simple act of taking a deep breath, whether it's if I'm driving and running late somewhere or if I'm taking a test, it makes all the difference. Okay. I couldn't love more that he said that because how many times have we said, we know this sounds too simple just to learn how to breathe down into your chi pocket, but it is such a superpower and it does take training. You have to train yourself to be able to do it. Yes. Do you miss like the energy of the dojo? And especially because like your dad's a sensei, like, practicing and working with him yeah that's definitely something that i miss how we're all in there with sort of this one one focus of making ourselves better karate people are you Um, able to get rid of the distractions of the day better than some of your friends whether it's a girl they saw in the morning or the fact that they didn't do well in class whatever i'm thinking the smile he just gave us means that happens to him too (laughs) (laughs) yeah so when Something happens to someone in the in the morning, they tend to just carry it on through the day. And I think that the important distinction to make is, is this something that you can control or is this something that you can't control? And I think that from karate, you sort of learn to do what you can do to control the things that you can. But if it's out of your control, just let it go. Boy, that's wicked hard sometimes. Oh, yeah, because it's <laughs> always sort of in the back of your mind, but you just have to let it not. Take Come to over. the front. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we all strive for, right? Exactly. It's actually something that my my college tennis coach sort of has to tell us a lot. Since it's such an academically rigorous school, yes. when somebody has a test coming up, a homework that they did forgot to do or say they did poorly on an assignment, you can usually see that bleeding through their, their tennis performance. They're not as hmm. – their energy is low. They're not playing well. They just get down on themselves. And a lot of people, you can see it. Like, 
they'll miss one shot and all of a sudden there's a racket being thrown when on another day it would have been, you know, just go to the next point. Mm -hmm. So besides not throwing their racket, they, they've thrown their focus uh, away too. Exactly. Yes. Um, what about from the self-defense category? Uh, so Is that where you look? About. Great minds, dude. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> Let's let Landon go first. So do you practice your self-defense? Like, we're not practice. But think like, about have, it. Think about it. Definitely, because sort of the area that my school is in is not a great one. Like, we get these RPI alerts whenever something happens, and lately they've been happening all the time. Somebody got shot or, like, just all these all these bad things, just not a, not a great area. So I feel like you always have to have that awareness wherever you are. Have you had to use your self-defense? Do you think of that? I haven't really been in a situation where I had to... Head. Or I had to like physically defend myself. I think it's it's more just the the mental processes that you have to do, just like decision making, self control, and being aware of even if something's not happening right now. I feel like I'm always thinking what could happen. That's true. And for those that are not in karate or that are not in our dojo, self defense isn't only just the movement, but it's also what you think in the situation because. Attitude is, what percentage? I'm going to make one up. 65. 65% <laughs> of it is your attitude going in. Yes. I want to ask you on that same note, do you have? Do you still carry inside your head a few stri strikes, a few follow-up strikes that you really like in the God forbid situation? Do you still keep those in your head? Yep, for sure. Can you name, just not, not to put you on the spot, just one or two things that you really like, an empty or... I think an ear clap. Uh, could nice. be so effective. So effective. And also anything you do with your elbows is super powerful. How about weaponry? Do you ever think about what you carry with you that is capable of becoming weaponry? Yeah, I think it's it, it's sort of less serious for me. I think I think it's more of like a fun thing sometimes of mm -hmm. oh like what what could I do with this? What what does this look like? Oh, that sort of looks like, you know, a bow. If somebody, you know, came up, how would I pick it up? How would I want to use it? For fun the other night, because the kids were kind of, the, the teenagers, we we're in adult class, were kind of, oh, I've worked hard enough, right? I went in the office and picked out three random things, and we turned them into weapons right on the spot, <laughs> just for fun, just to see what yeah, we can do with them. Tennis racket. <laughs> oh. Tennis rackets can be very effective at self -defense. I feel self like somebody came with the tennis racket in the Black Belt show we did last spring. Great. Have you ever thought about finding another dojo? I've thought about that. I think that something I really want to do after I'm done with school, is try another style. Which I think is an awesome idea. Yeah, Any I, style catches your attention? I've been wanting to try jujitsu for a bit. Oh, nice. That's a nice, that's a very similar style. So you'll find a lot in common when you go to a jujitsu school. Cool. You're waiting until you're finished with school and you can breathe and think, right? Right. I also think it would be fun to try boxing. Um, I so think boxing would cool. be great. Yeah. When I first went out to school, I thought that I was going to try and do one of the clubs or activities, but I just didn't have time with academics and tennis and whatnot. All right. We're sort of winding down here. I have one more question. Do you have another question over there, Landon? No, since I... Can you think of any karate-related ideas that you really have in your head that, that have stayed with you all these years that I didn't touch on? I often think of the game that we play with the distractions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trying to stay completely still. That's a good one. So my takeaway from this conversation is that one of the things that other than the self-defense, which is by far and away like a lifesaver, right? Yeah. The, the thing that karate really builds in a person is the ability to put your mind where you want your mind to be instead of letting your mind push you around, which is really annoying when your mind goes to start pushing you around. We've all had it. For yes. sure. We all know what it feels uh, sure. like. <laughs> and if you have that power, that internal power, that is priceless. But this is a good time to, to tell people if they got something else, right? So as we're winding down, um, this is not the end of all of our interviews. Tell us what your training stories, if you have um, moved on, or what you think about if you're not training right now. Let us know. Again, it's Jojo Conversations at AOL.com. Contact us on Facebook at Wildcat Dojo and contact us via our website, WildcatDojo.com. Did you guys know that one person actually did tease me about being at AOL and the way she said it was so adorable. She said, I can't believe you have so much social media and you're still on AOL. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Isn't that cute? Yeah. 
I can't thank Zach enough for coming in and doing this. It's, this has been awesome for us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I really did learn a lot. Yes. Okay, say good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> You'll hear from us next week. Signing off for now. While I was doing the editing, it occurred to me that you all might be interested in the game Zach mentioned toward the end of the interview. Here's a brief description in case you're not familiar. Traditionally, at the end of class, students sit in a kneeling pose called seiza. Their eyes are closed, and they're slowly breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. In this exercise, the teachers walk around and try to get you to open your eyes or move by snapping their fingers, blowing air in your face, clapping near your ears, or even an occasional loud shout or ki. Students build an immunity to distractions with this game or exercise, whatever you'd like to call it. And on a side note, I recently had an eight-year-old child recommend that we not blow at each other's faces anymore so as not to pass germs. He certainly has a point, doesn't he? And before I sign off, I'd like to take a few minutes to thank all of you who wrote encouraging emails, texts, and even some voicemails. So here's a list of shout-outs. Both Thomas and Laura, thanks so much. Haya, for sure. Billy and Georgia, thank you. Thanks, Mara. And I'm not going to forget to mention Mo. Thanks, Mo. And an old friend named Susie Hammer, who runs a company that does parties and things like that. She spells her name S-U-Z-Y. And she's at SusieHammer.com, so call her up for your party needs. A separate shout-out to Mark Wilco, because not only did he send me encouraging words, but he also took time to write a review and a signal boost as well. I'm not sure what that is, but doesn't it sound great? Thanks, Mark. And the last email I'm going to mention is an email from me to all of you. I've been wanting to thank you all for listening. Without you, we'd just be talking to ourselves. We'd probably keep doing it because we're having so much fun. But the other day, I got an in-your-face reminder of how good these podcasts are for me and that I will always be a work in progress. The day the Time Management podcast aired, I was so stressing about time, and I was driving. When I start my drive on Monday mornings, I always like to listen to see how it sounds to all of you. When I heard myself bringing up time management, I laughed so hard. Alex, Jackie, and Landon were reminding me to pull it together. It changed my whole day. So again, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week.